All right. Um, first, what I want to say is we have learned a problem before using our neural network. So this is our neural network and this is our input layer, hidden layer. We may have many hidden layer and uh, after going through some hidden layers and we have, let's say our output is a number. Okay. So let me end the poll and uh, let me share the result. So I guess uh, majority of you guys um, don't like snow, but uh, as someone originally from a place, you know, like uh, seeing a snow, like in may maybe 20 years, I, I pretty much, I, I like snow a lot, but um, so the output is white hat. And what we went through were called uh, regression problem. Okay. So the neural network we are interested in, which is our model is uh, in most of the time it's called a regressor. So if you, um, if you go online and you Google some, you know, machine learning, um, like instructions or coding. So many of the time, the neural network is called a regressor. And because it's a regression problem, why it's a regression problem? Because uh, um, the target Y is of a continuous variable, okay? Of like, so with our data. So this function, this function is continuous, even though we do not know, we do not know like what this function is and we want to use neural network to approximate this function. But uh, the regression problem, the regression problem um, says, we'll, we'll try to use neural network to approximate this function, okay? And the loss function, so the loss for regression problem So if we represent our NN, so our neural networks weights as W and our Y hat is our H of X is a W. So this X is a little X and uh, uh, this X is like all the data. Um, then our loss function, so it's called a, a mean square loss, okay? Or MSE in general. So uh, if, we, uh, if we're using a TensorFlow or PyTorch, um, the MSE, this loss, so uh, we will see a lot in the context. So the MSC loss is built in and we don't have to particularly implementing them. We can just call uh, some functions from PyTorch and it's defined by, so it's basically defined by uh, y hat subtract y square, all right? Sometimes we have this uh, one half factor and most of the time we don't. Now, if we have n samples, so if we have n samples, for example, and now uh, this is our x. Yeah, let me see you use vector. So um, i and yi and I from one, two, dot, 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 capital N. So little i represents um, like our uh, samples. Then the MSE is, uh, MSE is then the average of the difference. Okay. 
Okay. So um, this one is uh, is NN's prediction, or say the NN's output using the ice, like uh, the samples. So these are called features uh, as input. Okay. And this one, this one is the true value or say the ground truth. So the true target of ith sample. This is this is a most common. This is a most common mean square uh, error. This loss, and sometimes we can have. Uh, we sometimes we have um, so called regularizer. Okay. All right. We sometimes we have a uh, regularization. Um, the first type is uh, is so called the L two regularizer. It has also a name called a reach regression. Okay. So if you Google uh, reach regression, it nothing but this. Okay. So we have. The following, so L is from here, then our new loss function, so I'm using this ridge, is nothing but the mean square loss, which is this L right here. So this L is this L right here, okay. So is our mean square loss function plus the L2 norm, so here is uh, an epsilon, which is a parameter, the L2 norm of our weights, okay, square. So epsilon is the strength of the regularizer. And W is the weights and the biases, if we have biases, weights of the NN, okay? So this is, uh, this is so-called the reach regression loss function. Um, my point is we can have many kinds of loss functions. So uh, we can have pretty much, and pretty much every common loss function uh, is built in in PyTorch. We don't have to particularly um, implement them and and another type of loss function is L1 regularizer. Um, and it, it was uh, in the first homework. So where we uh, like sketch the region approximately represented by, you know, two types of equation. The, the one is a circle, the other is a square. And that square represents uh, uh, this regression. It's, uh, it also has another name, it's called lasso. Uh, regression. So uh, the L lasso is just L. Again, this L, uh, this, oh, sorry, it's not, uh, it's not plus, it's equal. So again, this, uh, um, this L is our mean square loss uh, right there. And then we plus epsilon. Again, epsilon is the strength of this regularizer. And we add the one norm of, uh, so this is a one norm. Uh, this is a one norm of uh, matrix. Uh, if we write it explicitly, so let, let me, if, uh, where. So if W is a matrix, then one norm is basically the summation of every index of so this i represents like many indices it doesn't 
represents a single indices. So W may be a matrix, a collection of matrix, and this I is in some uh, index set. So basically is we add absolute value of every weight, every bias together. This is uh, called a L1 regularizer. And later in our final project, so uh, we will see perhaps our final project competition uh, going online after we learn all these loss function and how to implement them. So uh, we, we can test like, uh, so what, uh, let, let me use alpha here because this is commonly used alpha. Um, so we can, we can see, um, so we can see and we can test uh, how these L2 regularizer and L1 regularizer affect uh, our, this um, like, for example, prediction accuracy and other metrics of choice. So next in today's class, we're gonna learn a new problem. It's called classification problem, okay. Classification problem is kind of different from uh, from regression problem. So its target is not, it's not a continuous value, but rather the target. So the target is of discrete values, okay? So what I mean discrete values, so let's use a classic example so example, um, example is cats versus dogs. It's also like uh, one of the famous machine learning competition uh, in Kaggle. So for example, let's say if we have a cat, you know, sample. So this is, uh, let's say this is an image of cat, okay. So, and this is a matrix. Let's say this is a, this is our matrix. Let's say this is I1. So this is a matrix uh, representing uh, this image, okay. And uh, uh, let's use number zero to represent cats. Um, then this image is of class zero, which means it's a cat and we use this y equals zero to represent uh, this image, okay? And, uh, um, and let's say if we have another, let's say if we have another, let's say if we have another dog, You know, so, uh, and we name, we give this class, class one. So if, uh, if we have a dog image, um, let's say, we, we just say this image is in the class one, okay? Um, so for example, this matrix is, so this is I1, uh, I2, so this is a matrix uh, representing the image um, of a dog. So uh, representing uh, the image uh, on the left, okay. And apparently because uh, we, we just to say, if we have a dog image, we put it in class one, we, and uh, we just say this label I2 is just one, okay. I mean, this this is um, this is like how do we convert this type of uh, you know problem into mathematics abstraction, and even more, we want to convert this one to a probability distribution. So let's see how do we do it. Okay. So for example, we want to rewrite. So we would like to rewrite these two. Uh, using um, probability. So for example, now let's do it. 
So for sam sample I one, okay, which is this uh, cat image. The probability, the conditional probability of given this sample image of y, this i1, okay, is zero. So this means, this is a conditional probability. I know our probability is not uh, um, like a prerequisite for this class, but here I'll explain what this notation means. This P, this P of this Y equals zero means, and with this dash of X is first is given this image, okay. And this one, this probability means given this image, the probability of this image representing a cat, which means it's class zero, okay. Because, because we know that this image is a cat, this probability is what? All right. So what happens is, what happens, let me explain what happens here. So we rewrite, we rewrite the label, or say the target being zero. We rewrite this number. We rewrite this number using a probability. So given this image, given this image, we know that its label is zero. And this happening is of probability one because the, on the contrary, we have this is zero. So given this image, given this image, we know that because we know this image is a cat. So there is no chance, oh, sorry, this is one, okay. So there is no chance that this image is a dog because it's, we already know it's a cat. So this is uh, the probability of this image in, uh, is in uh, class one because we know it's in class zero. So it, it has zero probability belonging to class one. So that's why it's a zero. And so basically what happens here is we use this probability distribution to rewrite uh, this simple label equaling zero. And even though it becomes much, much more complicated, um, but later we will see, I mean, because if we use this representation, we can actually quantify and to, you know, to uh, set up a loss function and uh, we apply the gradient descent. And I do have a remark to make here uh, for us. So why we would like to use, uh, why we would like to use conditional probability, uh, why don't we use, um, why don't we just use this? So this is a probability of a sample being a cat. Okay, so it, it's kind of different. It's kind of different from the conditional one. This is a, we randomly uh, choose an image. Uh, the probability of this image has a cat in it. Okay, so, and we assume like every image either has a cat or a dog. And then um, this one, you know, so suppose we have like maybe say a, a thousand samples, then this one is nothing. So if we learn probability, we know that this is an absolute probability. It's basically number of all images uh, divides this uh, number of cat images, okay? 
it's kind of different from, from the conditional probability here, given we already have a sample, okay? Um, this probability, this absolute probability is like, a, is if we sample randomly and what is the chance uh, we obtain a cat from this pile of images. So it's kind of different. So different, different from uh, the conditional probability above, okay? So what happens here is we rewrite, we rewrite um, this one representing this. So similarly, similarly, if we have a dog, so uh, for sample, so for example, for sample um, I2, which is class one, okay? And which is a dog, we can write exactly the same description of this, that is, uh, y i two is zero. Keep in mind, this is uh, this is this sample being a cat. So given this sample, it is then zero. Okay. And similarly, um, the conditional probability of given this image of dog, it belongs to class one is probability one, all right? So we have, what we have here is a probability distribution of this uh, and that, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna introduce a loss function to characterize, so what we want to do, our goal is to, uh, so our goal here is to introduce a loss function. It has, it has two folds. The first folds is we have to convert so convert the output of um, a neural network to approximate a probability, okay? So for example, the basic requirement of a number being probability is it must be between zero to one, all right? Um, the probability of something being another, you know, within class zero one, it's a number between zero to one. So we cannot have this continuous uh, variable, which was originally for a regression problem. The second is we have to come up with a function. So a metric that so we'll see this metric, this word, you know, many times. It's not only in our class, but also in every machine learning package. So a metric that can compare uh, to probability distributions. Okay. So this is the today's goal. Uh, we wanna design something that uh, can convert our original regression problem to a classification problem to, you know, to meet our need here. So the idea is kind of simple. So if we have a loss, uh, a neural network, all right? So if we have a neural network here and we have the output function, which is in the range of uh, all the real number, um, we can simply apply a nonlinear transform, okay? So suppose our output, which is a single number right here, it's a real number. We can simply apply. So suppose so y hat is uh, 
this is our neural network output. And y hat is in uh, minus infinity to infinity. So its range is in minus infinity to infinity. Then we can apply a simple function called sigmoid function or logistic function. So uh, we can apply what we call a sigmoid function. on this y hat to convert it to convert it to a probability all right um so what is a sigmoid function and then let's let us learn the sigmoid function here the sigmoid function is defined so sigma z is defined by one over e to the minus z's power. So for example, um, so right here, if uh, we're converting a neural network's output uh, to a probability, we basically, we just plug in this y hat uh, right here. So why it, it's a probability first, um, if we uh, we plot um, the graph of this function, okay. So this is our z, and this is our sigma. Uh, it looks like something like this, and we have two asymptotics. So this is sigma equals one, and this is sigma equals zero. Um, the interesting part about, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm drawing, so part of my drawing, I think, uh, so, uh, so this is uh, one half. Okay, so it looks like something like this. Um, maybe, I mean, this slope right here is sharper. Um, but the sigmoid function looks like this. And we can show that the sigmoid function when z goes to infinity, this one is one. And when z goes to minus infinity, this one is zero. All right. So what happens here is we can simply, we just plug in our output and it, to the sigmoid function and suddenly it becomes an estimate of our probability. And let me explain why, okay. So for example, um, if we plug in, let's say um, we have our sigma y hat. So for example, our sigma y hat of uh, the I2 sample is maybe say um, 0.9, okay? So then this is, by the way, it's close to one. So we basically, we use this number to classify. If it's closer to one, we, uh, we basically, we assign its class to one, okay? So, If it's, uh, I should use, it's closer to one than zero, okay? Then we assign this sample uh, to class one. So basically we plug in, so here is a workflow. We plug in the sample to the neural network. So, and y hat i2 equals, um, this. So this is, uh, this is uh, basically is plug in the image into the neural network. Okay. And we get a number. And then 
we plug in this number to the sigmoid function, we get a probability. If this probability is closer to one than zero, uh, we assign it to class one. And if it's so otherwise, so if this one is closer to zero than one, we assign this sample to this sample x to class zero. Okay, so where um, y hat equals h of x. So this is how we use a single function, this single nonlinear transformation, the sigmoid function right here um, to convert our neural network's output to a probability. Okay. Um, and because of, uh, so because, so final is our neural networks. So our model, so hypotheses function to approximate this conditional probability, okay? I mean, this notation, so do not care too much about this notation. This is just bookkeeping. It means basically this one is either one or zero, all right? So this one is, uh, this one, is one or zero. It depends on whether we have a cat image or a dog image. And it's a conditional probability. It means given this sample, it's, it's not like Schrodinger's cat. You know, once we are given a sample, it's fixed. I mean, there is no like cat or dog. Okay, so once we're given a sample, we know it's either a cat or a dog. So um, this one is either one or zero. And once we have our logistic function, we can write it in a very compact way uh, to represent uh, our estimation. So, um, so now if uh, y hat equals h of x uh, is the output of the neural network, whatever neural network we have, but uh, if it's a scalar representing the neural, um, the output of this neural network, the estimated probability is as follows. So it is uh, sigma y hat raised to the yth power, um, subtract one minus sigma y hat raised to the one minus yth power, okay. Um, we can write it uh, in a very compact way um, in this way, why? is because uh, um, first we notice y is zero one, all right. So if, if if y equals zero, which means x uh, represents a sample in class zero, all right. Um, if y is zero, then what happens is this number raised to a zero is probably we get one and one minus y is one and we have one minus, we have one minus sigma of y hat. So 
And similarly, when y is 1, OK? So when y is 1, it means x represents a sample in class 1. This number is then um, this guy, right? So now why uh, we, we want to elaborate why this number represents an estimated probability. Um, for example, if our true value, this y, is of zero, we want our, like, uh, for example, we want, whoops. Uh, okay. So we want um, our probability to be as close. So we want this as big as possible. So we want, when y is zero, we want this probability as big as possible, okay? When y is one, we want this probability as big as possible. So when uh, y is zero, uh, so this is the estimated probability um, probability of x in class zero, all right? So, and we want this number as big as possible, which means uh, we want this probability to be close to one, which means we want this number close to zero, as close as possible, all right? So this one, basically, if this one is close to zero, we just put it in um, class zero. So like here, if it's closer to zero, one, we assign the sample to, cl uh, to class zero. And uh, um, basically, if y is zero, this one represents the estimate probability of this sample is in class zero, all right? And so similarly, vice versa, when y is one, when y is one, uh, we want this one close to one. So. When y is one, this one is a probability of this sample represents a sample in class one. So we want this number as be as close to one as possible, all right? So in other words, we combine these two. We'll see that what we want is we want this function as big as possible. Okay. So let's look at why it's as big as possible. When y is zero, we want this as close as possible to one, all right? So it's this term. This function achieves its maximum when this is actually zero. So when, when y is zero, okay? So when y is zero, Let's name this star. 
So star achieves max when this one is um, zero. Okay. So and uh, in the moment we assume like uh, we assume. Um, like zero raised to the first power um, is like still. So it's defined like uh, limit epsilon goes to zero plus epsilon raised to the zeroth power, sorry. Um, zeroth power is one, okay. And so similarly, when y is one, uh, this one achieves the maximum when our estimate is one. Basically what we're curious is this function gives us an indicator of how good our approximate um, is. So no matter. So this tells the following thing. So gives an indication of how good the estimated probability is, all right? If this number is big, if this number is big, it means, actually means uh, our estimate is either close to zero or close to one and it's accurate. So let's see why, um, because, so example, um, if, I mean, I'm just saying if, so if, so if y is zero, but the estimate, so if the true label is zero, but this one is close to one, let's see what happens. So this is a bad estimate. This is a case. So this is a case of a poor, estimate probability, all right? Because basically, if y is zero, we want this number close to zero. However, our estimate is close to one. Let's see what happens in this function. So y is zero, right? So y is zero, then this becomes one, okay? Y is zero, this is one. But if this is close to one, one minus a number close to one, Okay, so what happens is uh, the star equals one times one minus sigma. So this is one, okay. So this number is close to zero, close to zero. which means it's a small. If we have a good estimate, this number is close to one, okay? So let's say, so if y equals zero, um, and sigma y hat is close to zero, so this is a case of uh, a good estimate then what happens is we have the first term is still one and the second term so this one is close to one okay so it's closer to the maximum value of this function and now we can formally introduce of what we want to optimize. 
basically we want to optimize this function okay we want this function to be as maximum as possible so but this function is um however this function is highly nonlinear and uh, um we don't like that so instead so we want to maximize so our goal is to maximize star but instead instead so because uh, we know that sigma whatever is in zero to one okay and we know that y is zero or one instead we change we minimize the negative log of this function so the negative log of this function has a name okay so this negative log of this estimated probability is called the cross entropy loss function so the cross entropy loss function compares the difference of two probability distributions so it compares the difference of two probability distributions so if we write it explicitly, and this is our loss function. So it is uh, minus y times. So we basically, we take uh, the log of this, okay? So we basically, we take the log of it. And uh, so it is um, sigma y hat plus one minus y times natural log of uh, one minus sigma y hat okay so this is our cross entropy function and sometimes you guys will see uh, we replace basically the output with the sigmoid just by this y hat okay so next time we'll use that notation but uh, today we want to introduce sigmoid function so uh, that's why we use this notation. But next time I'll replace this just by y hat. So that's it for today. And if you have questions, you can, some short questions, you can stay here and ask. So I'll stop recording.